Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Marie. Nice to see you all again. Um, this video is specifically about my experiences making the McCall's uh, 7969 dress. Um, I made it a few months ago and I know I haven't been online very much, certainly not on YouTube. So a couple of people were asking me um, had I made it or what had I done with this lovely fabric that I'd shown um, in a previous video. So I thought I'd come on and just talk you quickly through um, my experiences of making this dress. I know a lot of people have made it and everybody's had different experiences, um, but I thought I'd throw my two penneth in and um, if you're still on the fence, then, you know, maybe a few things to bear in mind if you're going to go for it. I'm stroking it here, sorry. Um, so when I first became aware of the pattern, I quite liked it and I went to get it and it was sold out everywhere. So that's why uh, I didn't do it straight away. And then um, earlier this year, it was made available via Minerva.com um, free if you signed up for their newsletter. So why not? Um, so that's where I got the pattern from. I, in since coming back to sewing in the last couple of years, have tended to stay away from big four patterns just because of fitting issues. And I think one of the things that put me off sewing previously was I just wasn't getting a good fit and I didn't understand why. I don't understand why now um, big four patterns perhaps weren't the place to hang around. Um, certainly not while you're still building your skills or consolidating them. So, um, I'd seen some lovely makes of this, but I'd seen a large proportion of people say that it ran very big. And I know it's supposed to be a bit oversized. And if you look at the picture, and I love the way the picture, the picture, I love the way this dress hangs on the model. Um, that kind of, you know, barely touches anywhere kind of thing. The issue for me there was that I could see straight away this model is does not have a large bust and whilst crossovers and it's a fake crossover but whilst crossovers are quite a good shape for a larger bust um i'm not too comfortable see i think this is a little bit low i think that's because the fabric's stretched out because it's quite an old t-shirt now but anything lower than this i'm quite uncomfortable with it especially leaning forward um things gape and I don't I also don't like really high necks either so trying to get the right spot for a neckline is is a tricky one for me um but I do think a, a v-neck or a crossover um opens this area up when you are you have a short neck like I do so all of those things I'm trying to bear in mind um so I was conscious of the sizing so I knew I wanted to make a toile of the bodice um I think I made two in the end. So the first thing is that the sizing on this dress, again, the McCall's patterns don't give, um, they just give a body size, but not a finished garment size on the packet. Um, and they just give a bust size. They don't talk about high bust and full bust. And the full bust measurement to make sure that I had enough coverage across the front, which when you've got a crossover, that's what you need, um, would have put me in the X, XL. I'm just going to say, no, yes, it would have put me in the XL. Um, but I knew it was um, running large. I also know that if I pick things on my full bust size, then the shoulders are too big and this opening here is even bigger than it ought to be. I'm also a little bit shorter between here and here. So anything like that is just going to be too much. Um, so I sized down to the large. And when I printed that pattern piece off, the front bodice said that it would, it had a measurement of 43 and a half inches for the bust, for the large size. Now that is my actual bust measurement, full bust measurement. So... But I knew it was going to be big and I knew that I was going to have to do a bit of adjustment. So I thought, well, let, let's go with that. Um, so I made the first toile just as it was and could see straight away. 
that the crossover was way too low and of course because the distance from here to here um there was more fabric than there was me um was gaping a lot and flapping open so and i knew that was going to happen so but i wanted to make it to see what i needed to do so i then added in a, um i would try to make the fab the crossover higher so i did that um by adding in a sliver i haven't got the pattern piece i've chopped everything to pieces to for another go but instead of having the ordinary pattern piece i added another extra bit across here to try to bring the cross over um and that ended up making it a bit wider in the waist but that wasn't too much of a problem at that point um and also gave me the little bit extra that I needed across the front for ease. However, it was still gaping and flapping at the front. And when I looked at it again, um, I realised it's a matter of maths, I guess, of um, triangles and things like that. So just one second, let me just get this ruler. The... Because it's a raglan piece, the shoulder piece is out here. And if I want to cover this section here, I need to come across at more of an angle like that. Whereas the pattern piece was doing a lovely downward angle like that. And of course, that's going to be too low. So the first time I did it, I just tried to change that angle. But actually what I needed to do was start that line further in because it is quite wide around the neck so by instead of starting about here by starting an inch in you see how that automatically brought that further down so what I ended up doing was I added an inch to the top of the raglan and then from that point I kind of added an inch in that direction all the way so that would affect both pattern pieces and effectively, that was the change that I made that made the most difference was to bring in um, the, where the, at the top of the neck band. Um, so I will put the ruler down because I know what I'm like. I'll be playing with it and distracting me and you. Um, yes. So I thought, well, I may as well go for the fabric then. Let's, let's go into it. So the fabric was this lovely... Uh, jade viscose that I loved and a lot of people admired as well and were asking what I'd done with it um, and you can see how it's quite well I'm sorry I haven't put it on um, I've washed it but I haven't ironed it and there was a choice to be made between putting on makeup or ironing the dress and to be honest I'm not coming on a video without putting some makeup on so the dress will have to wait but there are pictures of me wearing it obviously so but you can see that it's still quite wide here um but i have got the v to stop it stops about here so it's okay it's perhaps still a little bit more open than i would have wanted but it's not the end of the world it's absolutely wearable um so in essence, what I ended up doing, even after making that pattern adjustment, was putting it on and then actually drawing the, the two sides together and actually pinning it where I wanted the crossover to be and then faffing about with smoothing out the crossovers below that point, which is not what you're supposed to do according to the pattern. I don't care. It, I wanted it to fit me and I got it to fit. So having done that, um, it was still um, gaping a bit at the front. I think if you have a smaller bust, it, it won't do that as much. But with a larger bust, it automatically pushes it forward and then the two sides of the fabric are opening. And because there's no tie under the bust to kind of secure it, it is more free flowing. Um, it was still gaping and I was, Gaping's too strong a word. 
but you could see more, you could see my underwear if, if I turned in certain ways and that's not what anybody wants um so what I ended up doing was instead of just putting a little catch at the top which people do I've tried with poppers before and they've pulled open and all of that I actually stitched in the ditch next to the so that actually the the binding is loose but I stitched in the ditch just on the one side across the front I didn't do it on the inside pieces but these pieces this cross here is completely stitched down so there's nothing going anywhere nothing's going to show so that's brilliant um, um I shortened the sleeves just by a couple of inches which I always do because sleeves are usually too long for me um, and that's fairly straightforward and then I was too stingy to print out the skirt pattern pieces basically because it's rectangles I mean you know so I cut um what fabric I had left I think I started with three meters or I had bought three meters but after I'd washed it I ended it with about 2.9 meters something like that shrank quite a bit for some reason anyway I cut I measured what the waist uh, circumference was um, did once and a half of that which was almost exactly um, the width of the fabric so I was just able to gather the fabric into the skirt and put it on the bottom because um, I was just too stingy to print off rectangles and because of the size of it some of the rectangle some of the pieces of paper would be blank because they would be in the middle of a rectangle you don't need to do that there was nothing fancy about it I didn't put pockets in it which I'm sad about. I wished I had put the pockets in, but I didn't. Um, so then I was left with um, a dress that was a weird length and I couldn't decide whether to shorten it to my knee or gather all the scraps and put an extra frill on the bottom to make it a more midi length. And as you can see from the picture, I went for the longer one. So I added an extra flounce on the bottom with um, whatever little strips I had left over. So I've used just about every inch of fabric. Um, and then when I finally put it on, I just thought, it's huge. It was absolutely enormous still. So um, what I ended up doing even after that was um, between the underarms between the sleeve and the waist where that was and which is not very big but it was straight down I ended up shaping it in a little bit um <clears throat> just to try to um make it feel less like a sack I think if I'd had more fabric putting some ties on the back might have helped but I didn't have enough for that so I brought in the waist, the side seams just a little bit to the waist and then um, kind of tried to ease it out back to the hips because I didn't want it to be too, you know, I wanted to have the, the fullness further down. So it's a bit of a bodge job between the underarm and the hip just because I was trying to give it a little bit of shape. Um, but I don't think anybody who... I hadn't told would see um so I'm happy with it and I'm quite happy to wear it but it, it does still feel quite big but I love it I love the fabric um, I think it's a very me colour yeah I think it's a very me colour um and well there's another thing it tells you to put interfacing on your binding now I can understand it for the sleeves But I don't quite understand why you would cut these pieces on the bias and then interface them. And I was in two minds and it has made that binding a little bit thicker. But I have to say, I, I think for aesthetic reasons, I quite like it, even if I'm not sure practically it's doing any good. 
so when I finished it I thought that's great I've made it I like it but it was a faff to fit and I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one but that was a few months ago and the weather's changing obviously um so we're going into autumn now in um in the UK um, Europe northern hemisphere um and I was just glancing through my fabric stash which is down there and thinking right I need um I'd like to make a dress for autumn and I saw this in my stash it's um it is a viscose mm, it's viscose I'm not sure if it's shallow anyway and it's a kind of a um lime green but not bright lime green it's kind of like lime green in the direction of olive um and i bought it i can't remember i think it was last year i bought it with no idea of what to do with it i just liked the color and put it away and i thought i think that would make a really nice um 7969 so i had it out yesterday or the day before and i put it all out to see if i had enough fabric and i don't have enough fabric i'm gonna need close to close to three meters and i think there's about two in there so i laid the pattern pieces out and the, the sleeves of the are absolutely enormous which is one of the reasons i like it um but once you've got the sleeves on there's not enough to make even a knee length dress i probably just need about another half a meter or a meter and three quarters and the really stupid thing is i can't remember where i bought the fabric from i've been looking everywhere um and it was such a long time ago that even if i remembered where it was from they probably sold out anyway so i've got one more chance um i might have got it in leon's in charlton um but i doubt they'll have any left but i'm gonna go and have a look but if you are watching this and you have seen it somewhere um could you let me know um, a half a metre would be enough. So, you know, if a remnant's bin or something. Um, but I've got it in my head that I want to make that, this dress again in this fabric. So I'm going to have to, I think, gradually wean myself off the idea. But I quite fancy an autumnal one of these. Am I making a rod for my own back by doing another one? Anyway. That's me and my M7969. I think the M in this one must stand not for McCall's anymore, but for Marie, because I made so many alterations. But that's why we sew, so that we can make things to fit ourselves. So those are my thoughts on that. I have got a few things planned. Um, I'll do a much more chatty and life update video um, in a couple of weeks time. I think we're ready for one of those um but i hope you're all well i hope your weekend is looking good and um hopefully i'll see you again soon take care